I don't know about you, but I don't really like surprises. I don't like surprise birthday parties, surprise bills, obviously, you name it. Unless it's a surprise free pint of ice cream. Who doesn't say no to that? Same is true for a lot of my patients. They dutifully come in to a pelvic floor PT evaluation after their physician recommends it or they hear good things from a friend, not really knowing what to expect. And then they find out the surprise of maybe having to do an internal exam. Not exactly the surprise they were looking for. I think I would rather have a surprise bill than have that kind of surprise. Hi, I'm Becky. Welcome to Wellness in the Pelvis. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and a mom, and I'm here to help you understand more about your body, especially when it comes to your pelvic health. Today, we're going to talk about why a pelvic floor physical therapist can do an internal um, pelvic floor muscle evaluation. So let's shed some light on what's going on down there. When people think of a physical therapist, they think of after an athlete has sprained their ankle, or if someone's been in a car wreck and they've been paralyzed, trying to learn how to walk again. And then there's what I do, which is helping people improve their bladder, bowel, and sexual function. My job is interesting because I really am helping treat the muscles that live inside the pelvis. These aren't really muscles that we learn a lot of in physical therapy school. How I learned it in gross anatomy was we cut the pelvis in half and then you could only see half of the muscles on the inside and good luck figuring that out when this is already confusing enough. So definitely not something that you come out of school being an expert in. Then how do we get trained in assessing pelvic floor muscle function to help improve people's bladder, bowel, and sexual health? We do a lot of coursework outside of the regular curriculum through our physical therapy programs. And so I was so gung-ho about this <laughs> in helping people's pelvic floors before getting out of school, whether that's a good thing or not, I think a good thing. But I started doing these classes even before I graduated. Although most people do it after they've been out for a little while. So there's two institutions that physical therapists will typically work through to get certified in treating pelvic floor muscle dysfunction. There's Herman and Wallace. They're kind of the the original people that set what pelvic floor physical therapy looks like. And then there's our governing body called the APTA, the American Physical Therapy Association. So you're generally going to find providers that are trained by one of those two groups. When we go to those classes, we actually have to practice on each other. So imagine never having done this before or having it done to you before and having a complete stranger practice on you. It's a weird time. But we get all of that out of the way so that way we are experts by the time we treat you. What are we assessing for? Your muscles. Just like everything else with physical therapy, our job is to help with your musculoskeletal health. And so if I take out your pelvic organs here, you can keep yours. That would be weird. But these are all skeletal muscles, just like anywhere else in your body, like your quads not your quads, like your biceps, quads in your legs. Obviously, I know my anatomy. But we're trying to help figure out what these muscles are doing and how healthy they are so we can help them work best to help you with your bladder, bowel, and sexual function, and more. How do we do a pelvic floor muscle exam? I'm going to explain how I do it in my practice. Every person's probably just a little bit different. In general, this is pretty much how it goes. The number one thing is that you have explicit informed consent over these kinds of examinations, whether it's internal or not. Anytime someone comes into our office, whether it's for bladder issues or neck pain, we want to make sure that you understand what we are doing. That's our job is to teach you what's going on with your body. The same is especially true though, if we're doing an internal pelvic floor muscle assessment. So there's two different ways we can do it. If you're a woman, Especially, there's two different ways. Men, only one. Definitely not two. But for women, we'll either assess vaginally or rectally. And then for men, rectally. Unless you can tell me another way to do it on a man. 
I also want to say we don't really like the word exam. That kind of has a negative connotation to it based on a lot of people's experiences with um, gynecologists or other sorts of internal pelvic organ examinations. So I try to avoid the word exam and say more assessment or evaluation um, just because I, I want to make my patients feel as comfortable as possible in my office. On the same note, there's no stirrups, no speculum, no gown that you have to decide if it goes front or back because you never know which way. <laughs> Do you want your boobs out or your tush out? I don't know. No crinkly paper that just gets thrown away. It's meant to be a very comfortable experience. So my patients will undress from the waist down and they'll have a sheet to cover up with so that way they can help maintain their modesty and lie on their back usually, although you can lie on your back, your side, your tummy, however is comfortable for you, but you can leave your socks on if your feet get cold, duh. Sometimes it's really cold in those offices and I like to have my toes be warm. And we make sure we give you plenty of pillows to help support your back, your hips, your knees, whatever it is that you need. Before we even work from the inside, we will assess externally. So we'll look for women, we'll look at the vulva, so the labia, the area around the labia. Um, and for men, we'll check the skin around the scrotum. And, um, and for both men and women, we'll check the perineum, which is the space between either the vaginal opening or the back of the scrotum and the anal opening. What we're looking for there is what the color looks like, what the quality of the skin looks like, make sure there's no tears or cuts or um, weird redness or anything like that because a lot of people don't look down there very often. So we just like to make sure things look nice. Then we'll probably assess the muscles externally and we'll touch some of the muscles from the outside, kind of just going around that perineum or just the area in the groin. We'll also check um, for your ability to contract your muscles from the outside. So for a woman, we'll look at maybe the uh, vaginal opening to see those muscles squeeze of the pelvic floor for men, maybe we'll look at the anal opening to see that squeeze, or for women too, we can look at that anal opening also, just to see what your brain body connection is like between the two. Then the real stuff happens. All this is with gloves on, of course. But then we put on lube that we made extra cold just for you, because who doesn't like a little wake me up with some cold lube? But depending on if we're working vaginally or rectally, we'll use plenty of lube We'd rather it be messy than painful. And then so we'll put just one finger on the inside of either orifice. And then we're going to touch all the different muscles. And there's a lot of them. So there's three stops along the way, whether we're working vaginally or rectally. So the first round, the right, the superficial muscles. And then, um, and then we'll go midway and then all the way. And so I like to help my patients understand how deep I'm working by using my knuckles as a guide. So just the beginning, just the opening is my first knuckle. Midway is the second knuckle, all the way is the third knuckle. And so checking all those muscles all the way around three times. It shouldn't feel like anything more than just pressure. So if you take your finger and just push on your arm a little bit, it shouldn't feel like anything more than just that. So we're looking for different sensations beyond just that little bit of pressure. Some people, if they're having pain, they'll describe burning or scratching or rusty nails pulling on the inside of their vagina. That sounds awful, but I've heard it, I swear. And some people don't really feel a lot and that's okay. Um, especially on the inside of the vagina or deep in the rectum, there's just not as many nerve endings. Um, so you might not even feel anything at all and that's totally normal. Once we've touched all those muscles, then we're checking for strength and coordination with your brain. So we'll see your ability to squeeze your pelvic floor muscles and your ability to relax them. And we'll check that in a couple of different ways um, for how long you can hold it, how many times you can hold it, and then how quickly you can hold and release. So lots of different brain teasers. Um, you may start feeling like I'm going to ask you then to pat your head and rub your tummy, which look, I can actually do that today. That doesn't always happen so successfully. Um, sometimes then ask you to count backwards from 100 by threes, hop on one foot, yada, yada, yada. 
not really. But this is kind of a brain exercise too, just to make sure that you know how your pelvic floor muscles work. From there, depending on what we find, we'll start giving different exercises while working from the inside. Are we going to help you with your strength? We're gonna give some ideas working from the inside so that way I make sure that you squeeze it right. Are we trying to help your ability to relax those muscles? We'll maybe give some exercises, some brain body exercises to help relax the muscles. Or if you're experiencing pain, I'm gonna do some internal manual techniques to help release that tension and pain in those muscles. We definitely don't do vaginal massage. So if you go to someone and they say they're gonna massage your muscles, turn and run. That is not what we do. So I said manual techniques and air quotes, um, but that's what we're trained to do is to help manually use our fingers to help these muscles stretch, lengthen, or just relax in general. Um, so that's actually something that is a very skill technique that we learn in these classes and it's not a vaginal massage. As weird as it may sound, most of my patients actually leave feeling way better than when they came in, partially because they learned so much while they're in my office. And hopefully I've helped them also feel relaxed and like they're in a really safe place. Um, it's never my intention to have you leave feeling worse or have you leave feeling scared that I definitely didn't do my job. And as weird as it sounds, sometimes we laugh and have a good time while we're checking out these muscles. Kind of break the ice a little bit. This is definitely a weird way to meet someone for the first time, but you can still have some fun while you're in public floor PD. I've even had people say after their rectal exam, that was the most fun rectal exam I've ever had, which makes me question, how many rectal exams have they had? Because I don't think any of them are fun. But hey, if I can be top of the list, I'll take it. The most important thing though is that you feel like you are in control. It doesn't matter who you're working with, whether it's me or someone else. If you don't feel like you're calling the shots, get out of there. It is our responsibility to make sure that you are getting better. And that doesn't just mean by stretching out some muscles or getting them stronger. It means making sure that this is feeling comfortable and better too. Even if in your head you're thinking, I'm okay, this is fine, it's gonna be over soon. If you're having this internal conflict between your brain and your body, it's still not okay. You are still not in control at that point. So let us know. You don't need to power through something just because you think it's good and, uh, and that's what you're supposed to do. I don't have an agenda other than for you to get better. So if you aren't feeling it, we're done. That's pretty much the gist of it. It's a weird thing that PTs can do, but it's super, super important. And if you ask any of my patients, I think they would agree that they came in maybe a little nervous for their first internal pelvic floor muscle assessment, but they leave feeling like they know so much more about their bodies. That's such a cool part of my job. I get the privilege to help you guys in your most vulnerable moments. And we take that very seriously. And it's really cool to watch people learn more about their bodies and have this, ah, that's how you do a Kegel. Or, oh my God, that's why I've been having chronic back pain for years. It was this one muscle. So crazy. And, and I know that this is a very unique opportunity. I wanna make sure that you get the most out of it. So what questions do you have? Are you rip roaring, ready to go to have an internal pelvic floor muscle assessment after this? <laughs> if not, that's okay. Let me know what questions you have. Don't worry about that like or subscribe thing. It's not really my thing. I'm just here to help you understand more about your body. If that's something you're into, watch more videos. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Bye.